I'm Rachel Hernandez, real estate investor turned mobile home investor and best-selling author. I make a living investing in mobile homes for cash flow for long-term passive income. After many mistakes and lessons learned, I've been able to create the kind of life where I can do the types of things I want to do, not have to do. I created the Adventures in Mobile Homes podcast to share with you what I've learned so you can spend more time with family, friends, and do things you love. Mobile home investing can help you get there. If you want to hear real stories with practical and actionable advice you can use from someone who's been in the trenches and who's still investing today to create the type of life you love, then you're in the right place. Let's get started. Well, hey there, and welcome to the Adventures of Mobile Homes podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Hernandez, aka Mobile Home Girl of AdventuresinMobileHomes.com. Thank you so much for joining me here on the 20th episode of the podcast. Now, just in case you missed it, be sure to tune in to the last episode where I answer the question, what is mobile home investing? You can find it along with the show notes at www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash 19. And that is the number 19. Okay, so let's get started. So last week, I talked about the history of mobile home investing, the resources out there to help you, and the different ways you can invest in mobile homes. I even answered a few questions people have about mobile home investing in the episode, and it was definitely a blast from the past, and an episode I really enjoyed doing. But today... I want to talk about a question that I get asked a lot, and that is, how exactly do you value mobile homes in the first place? And what are the steps you need to take to determine the value of a mobile home when you're just starting out? Because it's very important to know how to determine values first before you go out and start buying and selling and or renting mobile homes, for that matter. Otherwise, you could miss something when you buy or sell or when you rent it out. And that's not a good thing. But before we move on, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Hey there, Rachel here. Are you interested in mobile home investing? If yes, I've got a free mobile home investing course for you. It's called What You Need to Know to Get Started in Mobile Home Investing. It details all the ins and outs of what you need to know before you get started as a mobile home investor. With so much information out there, it's overwhelming to go out and search for what you're looking for. So I put my knowledge and expertise in mobile home investing to work, and it's all in this free training course. You can find it at www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash free training class. Again, www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash free training class. Grab your seat and get started today. Now, back to the show. Okay, first things first, when you're out looking at mobile homes to buy, how exactly do you value a mobile home in the first place? How do you know what's a good deal versus what's a bad deal? Is there a magic formula to determine value? Or is it just something that you just wing and go with what you feel 
the value is worth. Now, this is one of the most popular questions I get from people when it comes to mobile home investing. And honestly, it really starts with learning your market, which I cover in episode five of this podcast. When you're just starting out, you really need to learn your market and know what areas you want to buy in and what areas and or communities you want to sell or rent in. This is basic marketing 101, especially for all real estate investors and mobile home investors alike. You really need to know your market in order to get in the game and be successful in the first place. So let's start with that. Let's assume you've learned your market and you know what areas you want to buy in. Let's also take it a step further. You've already picked a few parks to work with and have had some contact with the park managers who've told you you can work in their parks. If you're looking to buy mobile homes on land, you can skip this step as you'll only be dealing with the sellers directly. So let's start with finding values and comparing them. How do you determine values in the first place? Sure, you can find homes listed on the market and you may even be working with some sellers who are selling to you, but how do you determine the value? And how do you make your offer on the home? How do you know how much to buy a mobile home for? And is there a formula out there? Okay, well, I'm gonna tell you. There's not an exact formula out there. I know, I know. In real estate investing, there's always a formula. And if you've been in real estate as a real estate investor for as long as I have, then you know what I'm talking about. People talk about formulas and ARVs, a.k.a. the after repair value, like it's some kind of math problem. But honestly, and by the way, Lonnie Scruggs, my personal mentor, also told me this, there is no secret formula. Determining value is about just getting the information you need to make a determination on your own terms, on what's a good deal for you, not for someone else. Simple as that. Because what may be a good deal for you may not necessarily be a good deal for someone else, and vice versa. So where do we get this information in the first place? Well, if you're working in mobile home parks, the best source of information is the park manager. They know exactly how much homes are selling for and renting for. Plus, they know if homes are sold for cash and or payments, and even how much someone put down as a down payment and their monthly payment to the person who sold it. Either the homeowner and or an investor like me or you. But you may ask, how would a park manager know all of this information? Why? Because people talk. It's just a fact of human nature. When sellers sell their homes in a mobile home park before they put it on the market, usually they have to tell the park manager. This is like giving notice. As they don't know if the person they sell it to will keep it in the park or move it out of the park. 
So usually, sellers will stay in touch with a park manager throughout the entire sales process. Now, this is where you come in by networking with the park manager, which you should already be doing. So hopefully, you'll receive these leads during this stage. But just in case you missed it, I cover talking to park managers in episode 8 of this podcast, which I'll link up here in the show notes. Getting back to it, once a seller sells a home and finds a buyer, either to another homeowner or an investor, like me or you, then they'll tell the park manager. And out of curiosity, usually the park manager will ask, or the seller will just tell them, I sold the home for X amount of money, in cash or in payment. And sometimes even the seller will say that the buyer just ended up giving me a down payment of X and paying monthly payments of Y. I kid you not. It happens more than you know. Because honestly, this business is about relationships. And people. And mobile home residents and park managers usually have known each other for quite some time. And they probably have a relationship already. So... It's in your best interest to strengthen your relationships with park managers. If you're buying mobile homes and parks, you absolutely need to have a good relationship with the park manager or the owner so that you can go in and talk to them naturally, just as you would any other person you know, and find out exactly what the values are of mobile homes on the market, what is sold for in their park, and what things rent out for. I cannot tell you how many times I'll go in and talk to a park manager and I'll tell them about a seller that I'm working with in the park or a seller I'm about to go in and see and I'll ask them for their opinion Straight up, I'll ask, say, what do you think this home should sell for? Or what do you think the value of this home is? And what can I sell it for or rent it out for? Other questions include things like, what have other homes sold for in the park? Did they end up selling for cash or in payments? And how much? Now, of course, you just don't want to just fire all of these questions at once at the park manager. You have to work it into the conversation. But if you've got a good enough relationship, they'll tell you. And guess what? There you go. You just determine the value of a mobile home. What you can buy it for, what you can sell it for, whether in cash or in payments, and what you can rent it out for, if you choose to go down that route. And you're done. Another step further would be to talk to residents living in the park. And I've done this as well. Just walk in the park, you can strike up a conversation if you're doing any marketing in the park, which I covered in episode 17 of this podcast, where I talk about how to market and find sellers of mobile homes to buy. But again, it has to come out naturally. Otherwise, it'll be a turnoff, and you won't get the information that you need. As I've said before, it's not what you say, but how you say it that counts. Now, if this is difficult for you, I do do mentoring for those who need it. So if you need help, let me know 
and I'll link up some information here on how I can help mentor you in the show notes. Getting back to it, if you're planning to rent out the home or even wanting to do payments on the home, most times you want to make sure the payment is in line with the rents in the area. So you'll have to go check out the nearby apartment complexes close by. And on that note, the closer, the better. Don't get too far away from the park or the area you plan to invest in if buying mobile homes on land. So check out what apartments rent out for. Usually, you can just call the apartment offices to find out the information. Tell them you're wondering about what a three-bedroom, two-bath, or a two-bedroom, two-bath, or whatever the amount of bedrooms and bathrooms the mobile home has that you're planning to buy, sell, or rent out for has. Then start writing this list down and documenting the rent amounts for each place that you call. This will help you make a determination on what to value mobile homes when you go to sell them or rent them out. Now, if you're interested in learning more, I go over this process in my book, Adventures in Mobile Homes, How I Got Started in Mobile Home Investing, and how you can too, which I'll link up here in the show notes. So whether you're planning to rent the home or sell it using payments, this monthly payment that you determine of what people in the area are paying for rent will determine your monthly payment. Again, make sure the properties or apartment complexes that you visit or call are close to the mobile home you plan to buy. And also, make sure that you compare similar units. For example, if you're planning to rent or sell a three-bedroom, two-bath mobile home, then you want to compare it to other subject properties in the area that are also three-bedroom, two-baths. Whether they be mobile homes apartment units and complexes, single-family homes, or duplexes. But again, the important thing is to make sure you're close to the subject property. I cannot stress the importance of this enough. Now, once you have an idea of what you want to charge as a monthly payment, then you have to figure in the deposit, if renting or move-in fee, as I call it, when you offer the home on payment. For me personally, I do a lease with option of purchase when selling mobile homes. Now, I won't go into this in this episode, but I can do an episode on it down the road, so stay tuned. In any case, so how do you figure in the deposit or the down payment or move-in fee, as I like to call it, when renting or selling mobile homes? Well, that's easy. You just ask around. If you're renting, ask the park manager. They should be able to tell you, as well as what you should take down as a down payment if selling in payments or doing a lease with option to purchase as a move-in fee, which is what I do. Now, Lonnie Scruggs, the godfather of mobile home investing, taught that when determining what you want to sell mobile homes on payments, to ask people who call in how much can they pay per month and how much do they have for a down payment. And I'll be honest, this can work if you have the patience. I tried doing this when I first started out, and most people just told me they don't know what they can pay 
And they just want to know how much per month and how much to get into the home. So for me, this method didn't really work. I ended up going in circles with people, asking again, after I asked the first time. And I just ended up doing my own market research and coming up with my own monthly payment and the payment to move into the mobile homes that I had in the parks. Though, if you want to try Lonnie Scruggs method of asking people how much they can pay per month and how much money they have to put down, by all means, go ahead. If that works for you, let me know. I'd love to hear your experiences about it. Now, another route you can go to determine the value on a mobile home is to network and talk to mobile home dealerships in your area. I went over building your team in episode 11 of this podcast. So if you missed that episode, be sure to check it out. And I'll link it up here in the show notes, just in case you missed it. But getting back to it, mobile home dealerships should be on your list of team members when forming your team. And you should be networking and touching base with a few mobile home dealerships in your area on a regular basis. Now, why should you do this? Because mobile home dealerships are in the business of selling mobile homes, many times new mobile homes, to consumers. So a lot of times they'll be working with all kinds of people who are looking to buy and or sell their mobile homes in order to buy a new one. And guess who they call? It'll be the local mobile home dealership. So if you're there fresh in their mind, you'll be the first one they call when opportunities come their way. Especially if you've built up good and solid relationships. Now, when it comes to talking to mobile home dealerships, you want to go in there with a purpose every single time. Don't just haphazardly go in for no reason and plan to wing it. Because honestly, you'll end up lacking focus and direction. Whether it be wanting to see what leads come up or needing some insight on the mobile home selling or buying market, Be sure you know what information you're trying to find out before you go. Now, once you get there, you need to keep it light. Let them talk as I taught you with how to talk to park managers in episode 8. The last thing you want to do is start spouting off question after question after question which is a major turnoff. Make your conversation natural. Make sure it flows. And again, it should be a two-way street. You need to figure out how both you and the dealership can help each other. So it's a win-win situation for both of you. But once you do start talking to mobile home dealerships, tell them that there are a few opportunities you're looking at and you just need some help determining value. Probably the first thing they'll ask is a location of the mobile homes that you intend to buy. This will give them an idea of the type of neighborhood and what the demand is in the market for that particular area. Then they'll probably ask you about the specifications, like how big it is, 
how many bedrooms and bathrooms, and any fix-up work you think that needs to be done. Then they'll probably tell you about a couple of mobile homes they know that have sold in X area for how long ago, what it sold for in cash and or on payments. If they're working with other investors, which many times they do, then they'll go over what other investors have sold their mobile homes for in the past and how long it took. Write these things down and take in all of this information so you don't forget. If you're planning to buy mobile homes on land, mobile home dealerships may also have more insight for you, as this is usually their area of specialization. But they also do sell new mobile homes and parks when the opportunity presents itself. So pay attention. And be sure to write everything down. But again, make it natural. You need to make them know that you're paying attention and listening to them. Now you've got an idea of the market values for mobile homes in the area, whether it be on land or in parks. Now, a lot of people have asked me if the NADA guides are worth it to get values on mobile homes. And quite honestly, I never bought one in all of my years as a mobile home investor. For anyone I'm familiar with the NADA guides, they're kind of like a Kelly Blue Book, like for values of cars, but for manufactured housing. They've been around for quite some time, and some mobile home dealerships and mobile home sellers, they have them, and they use them as a guide when it comes to selling mobile homes. Now, I will admit, when I first started out in mobile home investing, I did consider getting the book, but even Lonnie himself told me it's not necessary because the NADA guidebooks are more for retail sales and for consumers when they're selling. Honestly, what mobile home investing really is, is filling a need for affordable housing and helping the consumer find a place to live and making it affordable. So for now, I'd say it's not necessary for you to get the NADA guidebook as a mobile home investor just starting out. Next, you want to look at the mobile home itself in order to determine its value. And I'm going to cover the inspection process in the next episode as there's a lot to know because it'll be too much to go over here. So stay tuned. So there you have it. The first part of the series of how to value mobile homes and the methods and the resources that you can use to help you find the information that you need to determine values when buying, selling, and renting used mobile homes. Now, I'll go over the next part of the series in the next episode, where I talk about how to value mobile homes by doing inspections with homeowners who are selling and determining repairs and eventually value. Again, it's just too much to go over here in one episode. So I figured it best to break up this series into two episodes. This way, I can dedicate a whole episode to the inspection process and determining value on a mobile home and not miss anything, or rush it, for that matter. 
I hope this episode has helped you to learn how to value mobile homes and what you can do to find the information that you need to determine value. Whether you're buying, selling, and or renting, use mobile homes in parks or on land. So what did you think? Did this episode help you as a mobile home investor? I hope so. If you've enjoyed the show and find value with it, please consider supporting the show. I've enjoyed this podcasting journey so far, and it's something that I've always wanted to do. I'll include a link here in the show notes on how you can support me if you'd like to check it out. For more information on this episode, check out the show notes where I link up some of the resources mentioned here. You can find it at www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash 20. And that is the number 20. Again, www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash 20. And if you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to share it with family and friends. And be sure to subscribe. If you have some time, I'd love to hear your feedback through a short Apple podcast review. Until next time, this is Rachel Hernandez, a.k.a. Mobile Home Girl of the Adventures of Mobile Homes podcast, signing off. Thanks for listening.